Hi and welcome to this DCP Web HTML5 and CSS3 beginners tutorial. In part two of this tutorial, we're going to look at something called div tags. So let's open up our Notepad Plus file, and you should still have the content that you had before um, in your Notepad Plus Plus file. If you don't, and if you just see something like a blank document here, all you need to do is open up the folder, go to the Sun project, and drag and drop the index file into Notepad Plus Plus, and then you go to the CSS and drag and drop that. To the side of this HTML, yeah, just to the side here, and then you'll have both of your documents open up in here. We need to open up our web browser, drag that to the left hand side here, and then we can just uh, open up the HTML file here. And we'll be back to exactly where we left off in the last tutorial. So, what we want to do, let's get this uh, HTML content here. And if you remember in our last tutorial, we created these classes. And these classes just manipulated the content specifically where we wanted to manipulate them. Um, and in this tutorial, we want to try and show you, or we're going to show you, something called div tags. So let's do a basic example just to get you up to speed and understand. So I'm going to tab in here and I'm just going to type in div, D-I-V. And div stands for division. That's what it is, dividing up content, dividing it, division, yeah? So we have a divide tag here or a division tag here. We just call it a div tag. And we're going to put one uh, at the bottom right here. In fact, what we'll do is we'll put one in between these two paragraphs just to show you, right? So we'll put a div tag here and we need to close that div tag. So whenever we click on the div tag or whenever we click on H1, doesn't matter what we click on, you'll notice that when you click on it, especially with Notepad++, it will highlight purple and it will show you where the end tag is. And this is quite useful. So when we click on this div tag, it will show us the opening and the closing tag. Now, if I went to the website and refreshed it, nothing's gonna happen. Because this div tag is like a container. And what it's saying is, um, tell me what you really want me to do. Uh, all you told me is just to put the container at the beginning and the container at the end or the divider or the division at the beginning and the division at the end but you've not told me anything else to do so we need to tell the web browser to do something with this div tag now we can tell it to do lots of things but in this case what we're going to do is delete this um this class here yeah, from this paragraph called intro text so we delete it and we'll save it now when we refresh our intro text is going to go back to normal, but it's still got this span tag that we created before, do you remember, to make the text green? But it's just gone back to its normal font. So in this div tag, now we can put the class. So we can say class, and I think it was intro text, intro with capital T, so it's intro text here. And if we refresh, now we see the intro text here. So it's no longer, the class, instead of applying it to the paragraph, we're now applying it to the div tag now if i if if i was a web developer if my client said to me do you know what both these top first paragraphs on the website i don't like the blue one maybe he said make this one blue then he said afterwards the client said to you okay i don't want that second one to be blue i actually want it to be purple like the one above the first two paragraphs you've got a couple of different ways there's no real set rules in html or css well there's a lot of set rules but uh, there's you know you can do things in different ways so if i said to you um now, this, this, this text here, we want this one down here to be um, the same purple color. There's a few different ways we could do that, right? There's one way we could, we could take this intro text class and we could paste it here. So then they're both going to be the same. And if we refresh, it will be purple. But what we could do is instead of doing that, we could just delete this class. And then we could take this div tag and move it to the bottom underneath this paragraph, right? Now, if you notice, this first paragraph, you can see it starts here and ends here, and the second paragraph starts here and ends here, and the div tag starts at the top here and ends here. So it's surrounding all of these paragraphs. And if we refresh, everything will remain purple. So if we go back to our CSS, and this is the intro text, right? If we were to change this to yellow let's change let's not change it to yellow let's change oh, okay let's change it to yellow for a second yeah let's change it to yellow color and if we refresh did i type that right i'm going to have to get rid of this hash here refresh now all of the text is yellow it's not very easy to see is it so let's change it to um 
let's change it to red for the second refresh now it's all red so what happened here we've got we've got um, a class called intro text and we wanted both paragraphs at the beginning to be the intro so instead of adding the tag here the class here and the class here the two classes we created one div tag that starts here and ends here and we surrounded the content with that div tag now anything within that within that, those div tags is going to inherit the um, the CSS from this intro text right so we've got this additional text here so let's do something with that um, that particular piece of content or the, the CSS so if we created a div tag here a new one and we created another div tag here to close it so we've got an open and closing one here and we've got an open and closing one here so this particular div tag if we went back to Wikipedia and we typed in, what did we type in? Our mm. sun, wasn't it? Mm. Let's type in sun. And we take, not the first, not the second, but the third paragraph. It's quite a long one. So we'll copy this and we'll paste it here. But what do we need to do? We need to make sure it's a paragraph, right? So we'll copy this paragraph into here and then we'll close the paragraph. Now, if we go back to the website and refresh it, we've now got a third paragraph here, but it has no class on the paragraph and it has no class on the div tag. But if we put a class here and we say to that class, what do we want? We want it to be additional text, which will be blue, 125 and justified, right? So we paste that here, additional text, save it, and then refresh. We're going to get blue, block justified and 125 font size. So this div tag, this second one is only for this particular paragraph. The first one, cause it's called intro text and this was the intro text, these two blocks, it's uh, red and it's all of these um, font styles and block justified because the div tag starts here and it ends here. So hopefully that's making sense. What's the advantage of this you could say? Well, these two paragraphs we only had to put one div tag to start and one to end and if we wanted to change something rather than having the class here and a class here we could have done it that way but rather having two class you know a class written here and a class written here on the paragraph like, like we did before we can have just the one div tag that surrounds the whole content then we can just go to that intro text and we can do something like font for the intro equals 150 and that will manage both of these paragraphs now both those paragraphs are 150 but this third one isn't because it's managed with a separate div tag with a different class we could take that class copy and paste it down here to the second paragraph or the third paragraph and refresh it then that one will take all of the features or the styles from that particular uh, class but let's undo that so we do Control z so we have our additional text class here refresh it and it'll be back to where it was before We'll go back to our styles here and we'll set it back to 125 so they're a bit more consistent. Yeah. Now let's do something to this additional text. Let's add a couple more tags here that we haven't seen before. Let's do background dash color and then colon and then we'll do the background color green. And if we refresh all of the text in this back, the background for all of this text will now be green. So we've got a tag or a style that is called background color and we can manipulate the background color here. We've also got another one called width, colon, and we could say make it 50%. So what you've got to understand is when we use this width, we're not applying it to the paragraph, we're applying it to the div tag. Yeah? All of this class is applied to the div tag, not the paragraph. It's whatever's inside of the div tag will get manipulated. So we're going to set it to 50% of the screen. So it doesn't matter how wide our browser is. It's always going to be 50% width, right? And we're applying that to the div tag. You understand that. It's no longer the paragraph tag. It's the div tag. It's separated away. It's, a, it's like a container. Tell me, give me this container that starts here and finishes here. Then tell me what you want to do with it with the class. So we could set that to 
uh, 100, then it will fill the full width. That's quite important to understand because when we start to build more complex websites and we want two columns, for example, then we do 50-50 or we might do 40, a gap in the middle, 10% 10, 10 and then another 40% on this side. So we could have two columns, for example, right? And we can do lots of different things or we could say, um, put the text only 50% on this side and then make an image and put the image on the right hand side, which will be the other 50%. So we can do lots of different things. So let's um, just do a quick recap. What we did was we removed the classes from the paragraphs here, these two paragraphs. We created a div tag that starts here and ends here and surrounds those two paragraphs. Then we used the class called intro text, which we created before, and we applied it to this div tag, which in turn applies it to the two paragraphs, right? The reason why this text is green is because it's got a span tag in here that we created before, and that span tag um, is treated separately. And that has its own class. If you remember, the inside text green, we can make that blue. If we make it blue now, this green text will turn to blue. Now it's blue. So we can manipulate the content this way and then we created a separate div tag because this we considered the intro text and this was subsequent text, not the intro text. So we created a different div tag here, which starts and ends here. And we gave it a class called additional text, which is what we created before. And we consider this to be additional text and we applied different CSS style to this particular paragraph. And we can see that here, the additional text. So that's Although it seems very basic, it's actually very powerful because when you go to build more complex websites, let's say something like this and let's look at this page, this would be a div tag here. And it would, and then there will, there'll be nested div tags, there'll be div tags inside of div tags to represent how we manipulate this content. And then this can be a div tag here and this one can be, uh, you know, these can all have contained div tags so we can manipulate the content We've got sliders and stuff like this. We've got all of these different features, how we can block out and separate content. You can even see it here. Look, in between these two, these are two different div tags. This one says, make this section a white background. And then there was a div tag saying, make this section a gray background, right? And we can have a div tag that um, looks at this particular title and it says center it center it on the screen and make it this particular font size. So this this particular title and the one above it, this one here, they're using the same div tag or the same class. The same class is applied to this particular piece of content. Yeah, The class doesn't always have to be applied to a div tag. You need to understand that sometimes we can just apply the class directly to uh, the um, HTML tag like we've done here. There is no, there is a, there's a class, but we're targeting it using the H1 tag, not the actual um, div tag, right? So it sounds a little bit complicated. Don't worry about it too much. As long as you're following the basic instructions and you're getting the understanding of it, as we move through these tutorials, it will become more clearer why we're doing this and why we're taking this particular approach, uh, especially when we build lots and lots and lots of web pages, when we start to build not one web page, but a website with 20, 30 pages, then using these div tags and using this CSS will help us to manipulate the content a lot, lot quicker. Imagine if you built a 50 page website and then your client says to you, I don't like the orange title, change the orange title to a green title and do that 50 web, web pages. You'd have to sit there and open up all of them 50 web pages and do that manipulation one by one on each page. But with CSS, We'll say to the client, no problem, we'll just go to our CSS style and change the color to a different color. And then because in our HTML page, um, here you can see the style sheet, we would have that same style sheet in all 50 pages. So then when we manipulate this one style sheet, it will, it will be re reflected against all 50 pages. So that's the real power of CSS is to separate the the, the substance, the, the HTML content away from the style, yeah? To keep the style separate in a different document to the raw content in the HTML document. Okay, let's close these windows. 
And that's the end of this tutorial and I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial.